Well, as we move on, um, just a few notes on taxation. I think uh, it's something we all live with. You know, you don't talk about religion, politics, or taxes, but uh, just a couple of things that it goes back really far, back to the French American Revolution's Whiskey Rebellion. And you remember the, the stamp tax, which helped uh, to get things going. And somebody once said that the tax collectors tie first place on the list of the world's oldest professions. So you never want to be known as one of these guys. I have Ed's favorite quote, and I just can't remember. I looked for an hour. It was in an old newsletter that I wrote, but it was during Ben Franklin's time uh, before the French Revolution, and it was the head of the French tax collection agency. And, it, and the way they wrote it, I'm not going to get it just right, but he said something like this, you know, collecting taxes like plucking a live goose. You want to get the most feathers without getting bit. And that's the way they, they looked at it. And I think it was Mae West, like husbands, you can't live with them. You can't live without them. You know, we need our taxes. And as I noticed in the bottom, there are social, political, emotional considerations. Um, people bitch, they complain. You know, I remember during Vietnam, the protests against taxes. Uh, you see on the license plates in D.C., no taxation without representation. Uh, you know, it can bring down governments. Uh, George Bush, you know, read my lips, no new taxes. It's, it's always a hot issue. Uh, that we like to talk certainly a lot more interesting than than weather. Just a few that I'm showing you. Uh, I think many of you pay many of these. My son has self-employed in Philly and he pays four different kind of self-employment taxes. Net business profits, this, 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 and this, and uh, it, it just gets old. But uh, with that, we have uh, tonight and the next few weeks and it's an opportunity to really get away from thinking about taxes, but to enjoy the only good part about taxes that I know of, and that, that's revenues. And like when I speak, I like to say I'm not an expert in this. I'm more of an accumulator. And for me, um, you know, I probably spend more time in club stuff than collecting stuff, but I like it that way because it gives me this finding things that I can talk about, things that I can write about from the newsletter, and it really don't get no better than that. So tonight I'll be talking about it, an introduction to collecting. And if you think about it, every time you came up with a new area to collect, I don't know about you, but I always got excited, like I was a kid again. I'm really, I'm, you know, and he, he just can't stop. And that's what I really wanted uh, to, to do. And I'm hoping that tonight with some of you uh, who don't collect revenues or have some, don't know much about them, <clears throat> you'll learn a little bit more. And even if maybe even a smaller group would say, you know, I think I could enjoy in collecting them. So I'm going to be emphasizing tonight uh, largely the U.S., uh, the federal level, uh, just a shout out to um, state and the locals, and then even a smaller shout out to show you the, the, the foreign ones. because They're attractive, and um, like R.D. Noble always says about pre-cancels, they're just a lot of fun, and I think uh, that's half of it. Um, a lot more articles in um, American stamp collector and dealer, uh, American philatelist uh, on, on these. Um, the uh, Scott Specialized Journal every year is putting more and more into uh, the revenue sections. Uh, and until doing this, I didn't even realize all the great stuff that's in there and mine's a 2007. So it, it, it's moving along. I mean, for a long time, they pretended that revenues didn't you know, exist. But uh, I think right now we, we are seeing a, a good following. And then uh, tonight, following the primer, Charlie's going to be talking about the private die uh, proprietaries. Uh, I think probably the most fun of all of the, the, um, the revenues out there. And uh, we, we traded each other's PowerPoint as backups. And this is some great stuff to show you. I think you will really enjoy it. Then in April, uh, Bill Sh uh, Schultz is coming in. Uh, and that's these little cards down here. And um, those were like a business card in the uh, late 1800s, mid to late 1800s, your, your photograph. But uh, at our, starting with the Civil War, you had to have a, a revenue stamp on them. So there's a lot of interesting things with that. And jumping back to proprietary, if you look at this stamp right here, um, we'll be seeing that later on and a little story about that. And then uh, Ron Lesher is coming April 28th to talk about uh, national prohibition and uh, legal alcohol and, and how they were taxed. So that's kind of our plan. We get kind of a, a grouping of our topics. And I'm seeing the, the same thing in uh, AP Magazine where they're, they're kind of grouping them. Uh, I like that where they kind of specialize on a topic. But uh, 
collecting, again, there's something for everybody. And I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit more in detail and then go through the, the stamps. But um, in my 1960 Scots that I got in 1960, 72 pages were just of U.S. revenues. So it was, it was a big deal. But for some people, starting with an album and placing stamps is a good place to begin, a good place to learn if, if you're new at it. Uh, and for those in inquiring minds, it's a good opportunity to, uh, to learn uh, using specialized catalogs of different societies. And these are listed at the end, uh, the revenue collecting groups uh, from US to worldwide. Uh, if you like fly specking, you can identify varieties, perfs, printings, inks, papers, print, you know, different printers who, who use them, Carpenter and what's his name, Charlie's favorites, they're, they're there all the time. And a lot of other characteristics, there's EFOs and I don't have one tonight, but I'll show you the ones where they occur in the Civil War and the second and third theories where many of the inside medallions or vignettes were, uh, you know, inverted. You can follow fiscal history, you know, modern history of the United States uh, of our um, economic growth uh, through taxes and illustrating with these documents that uh, do exist, the documents with the stamps, the you know, covers and others. Uh, it's kind of fun to match the revenues with the appropriate documents when you can find them. Uh, we'll be talking about that and how the, they switched that after about three months of trial and error. And then uh, you want to look for documents which have both the federal and state. I see if you can find documents with two state, different states, uh, their stamps on them. Uh, match proprietary revenue with its container. I think we'll see some of those tonight. Again, a lot of different ways to look at revenues and to study them, uh, to getting into the ephemera, then this beyond stamps, you know, in the book. And then uh, find the oddest revenue issue possible. Some exist. I showed you the one tonight of those locks and, and keys and uh, federal in IRS seals, uh, earliest known uses, uh, matching the stamp with its purpose in the correct document, like a bank revenue stamp on a bank check, and they will have some of these, a life insurance stamp on a life insurance policy. Because these were, there's only a very short period of time when you had to match the stamp to the document. So it's a fun area to collect. <clears throat> Integrating your revenues with your topical collection. So people who have wine on stamps, there's a lot of wine stamps, beer on stamps, uh, a lot more opportunities. I found a website, it listed worldwide 350 revenue tax topics on revenue stamps. 350 different topics from sheep and oysters and all kinds of things. And so I think any uh, stamp that, uh, any, any topical collection would be good uh, for some of these, uh, especially collecting of cancels. People specialize in those. Um, Dick Lesher, uh, no, Ron Lesher just had an article that came in the latest uh, American stamp dealer I just read today. He collected, um, American Flyer trains when he's young and just really liked the railroad stuff. And he got into stamp collecting and he said, I'm gonna see if I can find railroad companies canceling uh, the battleship stamps. And he wrote on that today and this whole article just basically on one railroad. So it was really a nice opening uh, for him. A couple articles in the um, American stamp dealer, uh, Dave Hunt brought them up too, uh, using US revenues on Confederate States of America documents. Uh, they're out there. So a lot of things, again, uh, for inquiring minds, each story has a, each uh, series has a stamp, to, I mean, a story to tell if you can get on them. Essays, specimens, uh, there's the dated reds and uh, finding one on a different year if you can. U.S. documents with foreign revenues, I got a few of those tonight. Identifying the businesses that are listing today that were on some of those private dies and cancels. So when we look at Charlie's stuff, you wonder if any of those are, are still going. But uh, looking at just a couple good references, which is the basis of tonight, my old specialized and the latest of Jewel Bettdorf and uh, Stephen Rod on the, um, the encyclopedia, a chapter on federal and a chapter on uh, local stamps. Good place to start. Uh, really before the Civil War, we could get tax income from documents, from uh, properties and goods and through uh, commerce, you know, we didn't have income tax in. So uh, the country had to really be creative in finding ways to get the taxes to, to pay the bills for the for the country. Starting in 1791, they're using embossed uh, seals, starting with whiskey, and then they added in parchment and vellum. And the different states had their names on these seals uh, that were used. In 1801, they added, uh, they took away the state names and just used federal names. 
on these seals. And uh, these were used up through 1817. And as the author of the article said, uh, you can get them, these old ones for up to five, only $5 to start. So prices aren't, aren't uh, going to get in your way if you want to start with some of the early ones. <clears throat> and then really not a lot of stamps going on until the Civil War. And we had the uh, Revenue Act. And the Civil War, we had three series of stamps for second and third. And um, the first series was 18, seven, 1862. And these were usable right till 1871 when they kind of abolished the system. And um, Scott, there are 102 of them. And I will just jump ahead a little bit. If you can see this slide, these are all the different kinds of stamps that they made. A stamp for express, a stamp for playing cards, a stamp for proprietary. And they don't seem to be very, again, mutually exclusive. I think there could be a lot of blending and blurring. As I look at them, I don't know all of them, but telegraph, uh, st uh, stamps for your checks, for certificates. What does that mean? Uh, the internal revenue, how does, how does that differ? Foreign exchange, inland exchange, yeah. Uh, for an agreement, how is that different than it? But they were there. And um, you can see that they had uh, 28 of them. And um, this went all the way up to, to uh, the, the 85th issue which uh, of the 102 stamps, the charter part of the last one came on issue uh, 82. Uh, getting back to that, uh, they came out, they varied in size and color. They were just one color each. Uh, these are the smaller ones, I have a few of the bigger ones, but they're there uh, if issued perforated, parsh, partially perforated and imperf. And I mentioned the 28 categories and um, as I said, the stamp for a certificate had to go on a certificate. A bank check stamp had to go on a bank check. And these started around October of 1862. By December of 1862, they just cried uncle. You know, when you start a system as complicated as this, and you don't even have the internet because it's 1862, you really have to think about your bean counters. Who's gonna sort all this out? Who's gonna do all of it? And so finally they said, just like they did with the uh, parcel post stamps after a short while, you can use them on anything. And that's what they said. So after 1862, you could see bank checks on uh, Alaska Will and Testament. You could see Alaska Will and Testament uh, revenue stamp um, attached uh, to a bill of lading. And so that's why a great area is to try to collect a bank, stack, bank stamp on a check and a insurance stamp on an insurance policy. Um, cancels were by, you can see here, a canceling device that the company would make or manuscript cancels with the initials of the uh, company or, or the, um, the representative of the company and, and they all had dates. So these would be used, you can see on a lot of the documents and a lot of documents that went back and forth, everybody had to, to pay a penny or two kind of like dollar cost averaging and uh, that's where you start. <clears throat> that's how we uh, start to pay for the war. So you can see some of the great cancels here. Uh, very attractive, 1864, the name of the company, the dates. And then uh, some of the manuscript cancels here, which are in manuscript dates and initials. These are some of the larger stamps and there's some even of, of, a, of a bigger size. You can see these are for certificates. This is US uh, internal revenue, that's a generic. And then this is a bank check. They came up with a second series because the first series people finding a way to use them over as usual to soak them off or whatever. And so they changed the colors to this blue and black and uh, some used a fugitive ink and um, it didn't last long. They, they pulled this series within a year because everything, they all looked alike. And I think we've heard, we heard that with the uh, parcel post stamps, you know, back in 1913, everybody's kind of confused. So they, they went away with the second series, um, but very nice not, um, details and drawings in them. They're very attractive stamps, but there was not the practical aspect. Uh, they all were, black and blue, except for the, uh, the final two, which were the, the large vertical the, uh, Persian rugs. And if you remember those, everybody says, Paul, can we see your album page for Persian rugs? And I'll, I'll say, yeah, and uh, there it is. 
Uh, but I think this set probably goes, for, I think, 2007. The catalog price is about $20,000 for, for both of these. Uh, when we went down in D.C. to see them, to see the Postal Museum, they had these there to, uh, to look at. Kind of neat to see in person. Then you had the third series, and this made up for the second series, which had the problems of looking alike. And uh, this came out with five different colors, all perforated. And uh, these were so that uh, you could not confuse these one with the other. And as they got this up and going, then they decided, well, we're paid off a lot of the war and we're not going to use them anymore. So they were discontinued. Now, not all of these are discontinued, uh, but uh, the bank check two cent stamps uh, were still going to be in use, though not from this series. Uh, in this series and in the other one, uh, there are inverted vignettes. And these are the areas that kind of got turned down, kind of like the airplane in the, in the frame. So there's the 151, 152s. These were the ones used on bank checks uh, right up till um, 1888. So they're used for another 16 years. In 19, uh, 1898, quite short again, how are we gonna pay for the Spanish-American War? And so they started to reintroduce documentary stamps. Uh, and um, shortly after the war, they authorized the stamps, but the Senate took another two months fighting about it. And so the uh, Bureau of Engraved Printing had to come up with something uh, so that they use these. And these went out, uh, these were the numbers, um, the, the images A87 up to the higher value ones. And uh, these were used until the battleship issues uh, came out. You can see these. Uh, we all know these very well. We have them in our collections. This AHO might be my family's company. I'm not sure. I have one of the other ones with the, the really nice one on it. And I put it somewhere where I wouldn't lose it. So obviously I don't have it to show you tonight, but uh, I will find it maybe put it in the, in the newsletter. And uh, these were largely rouletted. Uh, they had roulette problems. Uh, getting through the, the inspectors and they came up with a, a different system, the hyphen hole or the, the slot perforated system, which, which looks look like rouletting. Uh, so these were used and some others to pay uh, for that Spanish American war. This is the one about uh, remember the main. And you wanna be careful when you're looking at your battleships because there's a second series later on uh, just for proprietary. And if you don't read them really closely, they look like the values are a little bit different. They can throw you, you know, the, the partial half quarter cent things uh, are in the other set. But this is the uh, following the Civil War, the Spanish American War. And here's the use of the uh, 153 or four, didn't check out which, our overprinted internal revenue on an 1898 check. This is really uh, in the war. Is from what? Uh, <clears throat> Bel Air, Maryland. Another one, the Adams Express, uh, 1899, the battleship on it. And then also, along with the uh, revenue stamps, are the revenue stamp paper. Again, I was surprised how well these are illustrated in Scott's, uh, the depth and the detail. But these are authorized during the Civil War. It didn't come out until later on near the end of the war or after the war actually. And the image is uh, imprinted right onto the check or, or other documents. There's a variety of documents and designs uh, that are listed in Scott's like uh, bank checks, receipts, insurance. Um, and there's, it goes from RN, which is stamped paper, A version all the way to X, so different kinds. Most of them are two cents, a few of the upper uh, letters are you know, up to a dollar, but not high value at all. And uh, the RNX was created for the Spanish American War. This looks like an RND, I think, on a check. And I think this looks like a RNB, uh, number six. Very attractive. I think, Charlie, you've shown some of these in your works as well, I remember, with the polling. Uh, between the wars, 1914-1916, uh, quote, needed documentary stamps for uh, government expansion. Um, just prior to the beginning of uh, the onset of uh, income tax in the United States. So we're, we're getting there, getting close. 
And um, there's also a set of retired proprietary stamps issued at, in this period of the battleships, uh, the BB 32 to 64, uh, which are have some uh, lookalikes. No, I, wait a minute, I take that back. No. These look a lot like these that I'm not showing. In the Great War, the Revenue Act of 1917, again, how are we going to pay for the war? Uh, this series lasted till 1940. Uh, three different kinds, basic designs. You have the High Valley, which are our founding fathers. Uh, then you have the low values down over here, you know, one to 80 cents. And you have the medium value of the liberties. But this is a close one. I think if he, there's room for six, six different colors and six different values. Many are uh, with perfins. And, but I don't know is whether the, and especially on a lot of the later ones, if the perfins are there to actually cancel a stamp or if they're perfined first, and this is just a stamp that hasn't been canceled. And so maybe somebody will have some comments on that uh, later on as we move. Uh, these are the dated, or some call them the dreaded reds. Uh, there's 444 of these and 22 pages in my Scott's book. Um, they went from 40 to 58 values, from one to, to $10,000. I figured, well, we'll use the median age of the uh, birth year of our members. So I picked 1948, but actually, Here's one has a cancel date of 49 in the 1948 series. So uh, that's an area too, where you get to cross uh, the years. Moving on, this is 1963, not quite revenue stamp paper. I had only seen one. I don't know that much about them, but um, when you would sell a stock, you would get a uh, confirmation, just a little slip of paper uh, from your broker. And uh, that's what this is from the sale of this uh, bank stock. Real estate truck, and you know, 2587, $2,587 in 1963 was a lot of money. So it was a big transaction. But on the back is this printed documentary stamp. It looks like it was put on with machine, like a Pitney Bowes, which you put on, uh, you know, uh, metered, like it was metered on there. But you can see it has the date, it has the value, and it's a documentary stamp in the United States, internal revenue. A lot of other federal issues out there. You have largely, we've been talking about the R's, but the proprietaries, and I mentioned the battleships, future delivery, stock transfers, cordials, wines, beer, fermented fruit, playing cards, etc. cetera. Uh, I mentioned the beer and wine because they're running out of money because of tax money because of the um, prohibition. So they lowered some beers and wines to 3.2 so people could actually buy it and drink it and pay taxes. I remember in the service, you know, they would sell, you know, 3.2 beer, awful stuff, maybe keep me sober. Uh, and then during the, um, the early times, depression, potato and tobacco, these taxes, one for potato and tech, uh, they're kind of came in with a new deal and the Supreme Court uh, voted them both down. Uh, narcotics, marijuana, customs. But it's interesting, beer really lasted a long time, 66 to 51. I think they know where to tax us, you know, right, right, right where it hurts. Uh, and it's important to know, too, when you look at the dates, these are the dates of the stamp endings, but it doesn't mean the tax ended. So keep that in mind, too. Uh, they're still taxing beer. It's just we don't have a stamp for them. As a collector, I wish we did, uh, but they don't because there's a lot of work uh, with them, and now it's all com computerized. I like to uh, quote Ben Franklin, the only thing we can really be sure of is death and taxes. Uh, private diet preparatories, proprietaries, and uh, you'll see a nice presentation of this tonight. Uh, this includes one of them. And these are, they call them a match in the medicine. A lot of them because you, you paid tax on matches and on patent medicine, uh, canned fruits, perfumes, and playing cards. But because the, the Patent medicines were so crazy and, and potentially dangerous or, and or useless. Uh, they came up in 1906 with the, uh, is it the Pure Food and Drug Act. That's a stamp here, which is the 1998 uh, Celebrate the Century. And it has the same image uh, from Hunt's Remedy from Charlie's presentation uh, in this stamp here. 
but the private diet preparatories are is you had companies uh, kind of designing and making their own tax stamps. Uh, they had to be approved by the government and uh, the cost to them would be cheaper than buying the government stamps. And they had the advantage of advertising on the stamp. So instead of taking a government looking, you know, a red stamp, uh, they could use this stamp and it'd, it'd tell about what it did. And we're gonna get a lot more of that tonight. And they're, they're interesting, what I don't know is, and maybe Charlie will know, uh, who came up with the idea? Was that the government went to the business and said, hey, you know, you can do this. Or did somebody creative on the private side say, hey, government, would you let us do this? Uh, I think it'd make, make for an interesting uh, discussion. Here's my accumulation of uh, private dyes and a few others, you have narcotic stamps, but uh, a lot of these you're gonna get to see tonight. Um, not all the playing cards are, are there. And my DeWitt Clinton is kind of lo loose and that's a different stamp. But uh, when I found them, I would put them in here and I haven't done much with them uh, since. But again, a very interesting area to, to look at. Uh, state and locals. Um, a lot of my information uh, is from the, the encyclopedia. It said state revenues are for collectors with perseverance, ones who are not afraid of the unknown. And uh, what they're saying is there's just so many gazillion out there, you're never gonna be able to catch them all. But it's not just states, but it's uh, local jurisdictions, uh, Indian reservations. Uh, they started and I guess under British rule, Massachusetts Bay Colony, 1755 had some uh, embossed stamps, and these are all listed in Scots, uh, but there are taxes, fees, control, accounting, um, you know, your licenses, all going to your state and your locals. Uh, California, um, 1857, uh, the first state adhesive tax. It was for several, uh, several different kinds of transactions. And other states followed. One of the more interesting ones was for lottery tickets in Louisiana in 1866. And um, it says hunting and services and things like that, name a few. Uh, one of my favorite Canadians is for services and I will show that when we get briefly to the internationals. There's no albums for these, so you really have to design your own. And uh, there are, there's a lot of references and catalogs and things out there uh, that you have to look through to find the ones that you need for the area that you collect. Again, you have to specialize whether it's gonna be a, a topic or a certain kind of proprietary or if it's gonna be hunting, fishing stamps, or if it's gonna be, uh, you know, potato stamps or, or car stamps, you know, tax stamps, gas stamps. Uh, you, really, you really need to specialize. And not many of them are listed in Scots. They have a few of the state huntings, uh, but not others. <clears throat> Too many to collect them all. But here's a few state examples. Ohio priest pages look like they'd be pretty generic for everything. Uh, Philadelphia documentary stamp, a PA stock transfer stamp, but it's overprinted for pint of beverage. So we've seen these, these are during the war uh, for a kind of a wheel tax for your car. Maryland, and I said, these are not to proportion. So these were very quite small, like the like little green stamps you used to put in when you were kids quarter, fifth, an eighth of a gallon. Washington DC beverage tax, New York State, uh, stock transfer, Florida documentary stamps. So it's very interesting. Getting to the foreign, uh, this is the one I saw that I liked. This is the stamp that paid the tax for when you got your lights inspected. So maybe like a building inspector or something. This is for getting the gas inspected and you, you pay the tax. But, I saw this, it was written up in one of the journals and near the time of one of our stamp shows, I said, I gotta have me one of these. And I went to see Leslie, who's our specialized dealer in Canadian and then she had some and there it is. I just love that one with the, the lights and things. Uh, tobacco, I'm not sure about this first one, whether it's tobacco or whether it's Italy, but I'm guessing uh, Mexico tobacco and then Republic of uh, Colombia for tobacco stamps. Uh, some French stamps from the 1870, 1874, 1876. Not sure exactly what, but some kind of uh, stamp tax. And stamp tax from Argentina, Greece, and Romania. Uh, foreign revenues, more examples. These are some of the older ones. Uh, these are both from France. 
the document is, has a date of 1825 in it, you know, it doesn't mean that this is from 1825. They could be referring to something else. You don't know unless you have the whole thing. But you can see there's also an embossed area here. Here's one 1832, a little bit different in these. Looks like what they're letter pressed on. This company, uh, this country, I don't know, has that double eagle, maybe Poland or uh, Austria. Again, I'm not sure. I looked at the black languages in the back. I used to be good with languages, not anymore. So I, I can't tell what that is. Uh, both of these earlier ones from Austria, uh, unknown country, but a date of 1816. Again, that could be the Stamp Tax Act or it could be the year that that was actually uh, used. And um, Bob Kotanchik, you might know, this looks like the Royal Seal from Great Britain and Mike isn't here, but uh, it doesn't say anything about taxes or numbers, but it looked like it was clipped from a document. Not sure what it was, but uh, I think I didn't pay any more than 50 cents to a dollar for, for each one of these. So I bought it because I like it. Yeah, I, I can't see it. Uh, I can't see the detail well enough. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just embossing. But it, it has that, that, you know, that royal look to it. Yeah. You know, the could, garden. Could, could very well be. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it looks like a two shilling. Two less. One? 200 hmm? lap desks on the right. This? This thing here? Yeah, that's a two and that other side's got the S on it. I don't know if that's a number or a snake. It could be two sh you know, yeah, it could be. Because, you know, it, I, I think I, I got it from a revenue pack. So maybe, you know, the dealer knew more about it than I did. But uh, yeah, these are, this is what's so fun about this. You get to, to do the research. I just decided today to put in these internationals, just, you know, because I had them. So I still have to do a lot more work, but uh, well, good. Thank you. Uh, we have down here, Russia, Austria, Italy. And uh, foreign examples. Here's what's interesting about the Great Britain. They don't have a lot of these, quote, because once they started with their postage stamps, it said postage and revenue. So you'll see uh, like a regular King George V, um, ordinary garden variety every day, definitive. And that is the, uh, the revenue stamp for this document. A uh, United London Bank of Australia and a Canadian Credit Bank. I love this stuff. It's like, you know, a cover with all these auxiliary markings and they had quite a few on the back as well. And then you get foreign revenues on U.S. companies. Uh, I wrote about this, and Dave Hunt gave, gave me some help with it. But the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad Company uh, in England during World War II, and um, there is the revenue stamp. And if you look close over here, the printing of where it says Pennsylvania Railroad is on top of this uh, stamp there itself. You know, it's, it's a boss in its colors, but I think it was added first before some of the other material. And on the back is another postage and revenue stamp, the Victoria and George uh, issue uh, from 1940 or so. This is one of my favorites. Uh, Bill of Lading Presidential Line, San Francisco, a US company. It has a uh, 40 cent uh, stamp duty adhesive on it, covered with this, which has slugs in it for 12 to December, uh, 12 February, 1940. And so it's like a, like a double our revenue on there. And I don't know if that's more of a revenue input, it says, you know, duty or the way they canceled them again and the date that they canceled them. I'm thinking it might just be the cancel. And uh, the rest of the document goes down about another couple inches, but it was just kind of torn off the corner. And uh, these are some good resources for getting started um, because they, they list everything. You know, the United States Revenue Association or American Revenue Association, uh, you know, handbooks, reference catalogs. And uh, if you want a place to start, uh, that's a good one. Uh, their auctions are known for their auctions, uh, but they've been canceled since COVID. But a lot of good stuff to see. There's a state revenue society as well. And you can get information there with DVDs, text, papers, meetings, sales, blogs, auctions, uh, all there. And then there's a federal, I mean, a, an international society for the worldwide people. Uh, started in 1990 by Robeson Lowe, very well known, father of uh, postal history. But um, 
Uh, this is, has grown. They changed the name in, in 2007 to the Revenue Society. A lot of good information, and a lot of it is open to non-members, though there is a members-only section as well. But you can get a lot of access and, and data from here. And the uh, looking at the membership, the, the prices were not that expensive uh, to join. And then again, Scott's and the encyclopedia, uh, good places uh, for data when you get going. So that's my part. And um, questions, you can unmute for a minute then. I'll turn this off unless there's anybody wants to see a slide. Okay, I'll take the sharing off. Can we hear it for Paul? Uh, and please, uh, thank you, Paul. Great intro, sure. great primer. Uh, Any questions or anything? Love to hear some questions before we move on, but please, it's a, it's an open session between the two, so that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have one, mm -hmm. if I can. Um, there is a catalog for the state revenues uh, from the State Revenue Society, uh, where's this? Let me see, scare, scare. Came out 2014, right? Uh, this one, this is the first issue of it. There was a second issue, which I do not have, but um, that is a that was a first issue of that catalog, and it's it's fairly comprehensive, but there is an awful lot there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that was in the next edition, the one that uh, is on the website that yeah. came out in 2014. Because the cover looks the same, but with different stamps. Yeah. Right. Other questions, comments, before we move on to Charlie? 